Hello and welcome to this video on five things that I wish I had known when I started with Excel VBA. The first five things video that I published was very popular, so I recommend that you check out that video if you find this one useful. So in this video, I will show you five techniques, two are at beginner level, two intermediate, and the final one is for more advanced users. So let's get started on the first one using the complete word. So what is Complete Word and why do we need it? Well, if we look in the menu under Edit, you can see that we have Complete Word at the bottom and the shortcut key is Control and Space. So what is this all about? Well, if we type RG here, which is a range variable, we add the dot, what happens is that VBA gives us a list of options. And we can use, by typing in letters, we can go down to the one that we want. When we find the one that we want, for example, cells, we can press tab or space to finish. The difference is space gives us a space and tab just completes without the space. So you press tab and we get what we want. But what Complete Word does is in the case that we're not looking for a property or method of an object. So for example, imagine we want to use something like the timer. So we type TI and then we do control space and we get all the various options for time. So we can just go down here and select it. So this is very, very convenient for seeing what type of things are available and also for selecting them very quickly. Now, one way I find this very useful is if we have our variables like this. Suppose we have a customer name, for example, and we'll make that a string and the second one we have will say old customer name as a string. Now, because there's nothing with CUS, so if we type CUS like this, when we press autocomplete word, like control space, it completes the full word. And we can say equals here. And then if we do old and do control space, because there's nothing else with old, it automatically finishes the word. So using control space is a very, very quick way of writing code. So for example, we can say things like this workbook, we can finish that and we can say worksheets, go down here and then we can put in the range or the name or whatever we want. So you can see that complete word is very, very useful. So the second technique I use is the view definition from the menu. Now I have to say when I saw this first, I really was underwhelmed and didn't really realize how useful it was. So what we can do with definition is, for example, imagine we've code here and we're, we're calling a sub perform calc. And so we want to see exactly what the definition is. Well, we can right click and select definition and it brings us to the definition of it. Now we can also search, but sometimes when we search, if there's lots of mentions of it in the code, it can take a while to get there. So just using definition is very, very easy. And it also means that we're actually looking at what VBA considers the definition. We're not getting mixed up with another sub. Now, if we want to go back, we can just right click and we can just go to last position. So the definition, the shortcut key is shift F2 and to go back, it's control shift F2. So to go to the last position. Now, another way I find this useful is imagine we have like a sub and it's just got a lot of code. So there's, there's a lot of code here. Just imagine that. And we see something like result way down here and we're wondering what it is. We can just right click and just go to the definition and VBA will bring us to where it was declared. And even if it's a global variable, it'll bring us to the global place or if it was a parameter, it'll bring us there. So that's very, very useful. Now, the final way that I really like to use this is when we're trying to look at constants in VBA. So if you look at VB date here, you can see that VB date is a constant. So what happens in this code, we're running this code and we're checking if this value is a date. So if the type of value is a date. So we run the code and let's put this in our watch window. Now it turns out that it's giving us the value back eight and VB date is seven. So what we want to do is we want to figure out, well, what's the other value? What is it? What, what type is that? So what we can do is we can just click on VB date and do shift F2 for definition. And it brings us up all the members of VB ver type. So basically all its siblings. And then we can go down and we can find out what it is. So if you look at the bottom in the gray part, you can see that it shows the value. For example, it says VB null equals one. 
So if we go down, we can see that string equals 8. So now we know what the value of the string is. So this is very useful for any type of constant in VBA if we want to see all the other valuables that are available. Now to close this window, we can just click on the X in the top right or we can press Ctrl and F4. So the next thing I want to look at is the address of the range. And this is something I find very, very useful anytime that I'm debugging code. So imagine we've got some code like this. And what our code is actually doing, let's have a look at the Excel spreadsheet. And what our code is actually doing is any item bought that's greater than 45, it's writing out the first name here. So if we look here, the very first one we have should be Billy. And the next one that we have should be Winifred. But obviously, we're getting the wrong values under first name. So clearly something is wrong with our range. So the easiest way when we when something is wrong with our range, the easiest way to figure out what the range is, is to put a breakpoint here. And then when we run the code, we basically just grab the whole range. So the range, I've, I've deliberately made it look complicated here with different numbers in it. So rather than trying to calculate it out, we basically just drop it into the watch window. And let me bring up the watch window here. And we put in address. So the address of the range. And this shows us exactly what the address is. And we can see that the address is A6. So if we go back and look in the code, we'll see that A6 is wrong. It was A4 that we wanted. So we're two rows out. And so if we look in the code again, we'll see that the offset value is wrong. So, it's, so anytime that I have a problem with a range, this is always the first thing that I do. I drop it into the watch window and see if it's the right range. Now, sometimes you're looking at the range and the range might be right, but you're not 100% sure that you're actually on the right worksheet. Now, that's a second problem, especially when active sheet or something like that might be used. So what we can do to find a worksheet is add the range again. And then instead of address, we add the parent. So parent gives us back the range worksheet. And then we just simply ask for the name. And now we can see that orders is the worksheet. Now, following on for that, sometimes you might want to even make sure that you have the right workbook. So the right workbook, you've probably guessed what it's going to be. It's parent. The parent of the worksheet is the workbook. So it's parent, parent, name. And you can see, and I'll just make this uh, watch window just a bit bigger. You can see that we've got the workbook name. So again, just to go over them again, the address gives us back the address of the range. The parent.name gives us back the worksheet and the parent parent.name gives us back the workbook. So this is a very good way of checking if your range is valid. So years ago, when I started working with VBA, I thought that if you wanted to get a range from the user, you had to basically give the user a user form with a text box and ask them to put in the range. And then you had to verify it. Little did I know there was a much easier and more powerful way to get the range. So what we can do is we simply use the input box from application and we set the type to 8. So let's go back to the spreadsheet and run the code. We say set color and then it says please enter range and the user can just select the range from the worksheet. And then we click OK. And you can see that it turned the range to orange. So this is a very, very useful way of getting the range from the user and it requires very little code. Now, if you want to see more about the different types we can use on the input box, you can check out my website. So there's a free post on the VBA input box. And if you just want to see the different types that it has, you can just click on the input box type parameter options and it shows you the different types that are available. So we're on to the last technique now, and this is a bit advanced, but it's a really, really good one. Imagine you have a workbook like this and you want to read data from the workbook. So this is a very common thing in VBA. So one of the problems we often have is that we have to read lots of workbooks and we have to open and close them all. And sometimes if the workbooks are on the server or something like that, it can get quite slow. So it'd be nice to actually read data from a workbook without having to actually open it. And so it's possible to do that in VBA by using ADO. So what ADO is, is basically ActiveX database objects. And we use this to connect to databases like Access or SQL Server and read the data from them. So we can do the same thing with a worksheet. And what's more, it's quite easy to do. 
So let's take this file and we're going to close this file and then we're going to read the data from it. And we're going to put the results right here. So let's delete what's there and let's have a look at the code. So you can see the code here and I'm just going to clear all the different things here so to get rid of everything else. Now if you look at the code here, what we can see is that basically the first thing we're, we're getting the file name, it's very straightforward. We're just getting the file name from the current path, so very simple. Now what we need to do next is we need to get the connection. Now this is the connection string, so we do this with, with if it's a database or something. So it looks quite complicated, but actually you can just use everything here. The only thing that you need to change yourself is the file name. That's all you need, you can just use the rest as it is. After then we, we get the connection, we need to have a, a query. And so the query is like SQL, and this means it's actually quite powerful. So we can do many things with it. So for example, in this one, we're going to group all the data by the first name, and we're going to sum the amount. So once we have the query, and once we have the connection, we basically just create a record set. This is where the data goes. And we basically just run the query on the record set using the connection and it places the value in a record set. And then we can use copy from record set. This is like a range function and it writes out all the data. So if you think this is a bit complicated at first, it's gonna be the same pretty much every time. The only difference is, as I said, is the file name and the query that you run. So let's run the query so we can actually see it in action. So the workbook is closed, that's the key point here. And we run the code and you see it brought everything back. Now, let's try this again. The beauty of SQL is we can do a lot of stuff with it, the, the SQL queries. So in this one, we're gonna select everything from sales where the first name equals Alan. And let's run this code and you can see it brought back all the data. So by using SQL, we have a lot of power in our queries. If you wanna try the ADO code for yourself, you can just get it from my website. I leave the link in the description. It's basically on the page Excel VBA copy, the complete guide to copy and data. And you can just go down to the table of contents and it's using ADO and SQL. You can see an example of the code here and I've also included a lot of different ADO queries so you can try them all for yourself. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you would like to get notified when my new videos are published, then please click on the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon beside it. Now, if you'd like some more free Excel VBA resources, then check out my website, excelmacromastery.com. There are major articles on all the major areas of Excel VBA. Each article has an easy to navigate table of contents, as well as a quick guide that allows you to easily find the syntax you need. And there's tons of coding examples that you can copy and use in your own macros. You'll also find techniques that are not available anywhere else. I also have a VBA tutorial, and in this tutorial, there's lots of activities and solutions so that you can try them all for yourself, and it's all absolutely free. So that's all for me, and I hope to see you on my next video.